is within the U.S. Um, and there is a shift in the U.S. to open data. Um, so there's a lot of communities within the states that have all of their information online. And we know through our research that investors and site selectors are doing the majority of their research online. Um, so it's really critical to have uh, the broad amount of data that is required in an online manner. Um, the International Economic Development Council um, have their data selection standards uh, that you may be familiar with, and that's on average about over a thousand economic data points um, that investors and site selectors um, expect communities to have on hand. Um, additionally, um, w through the research we've seen that um, where six or eight years ago, site selectors would maybe have, you know, six to eight months to do their research. That's really crunched down now into six or eight weeks. So that information needs to be available right away, whether the investor and site selector is looking online um, or whether they're uh, calling up the communities themselves to, to get answers to this kind of question. Now, in terms of um, capacity, um, you know, one of the challenges that we've seen is that there are um, some communities across BC that don't have the um, the resources, the capacity to to undertake some of this um, this work because it's quite uh, quite a lot of research and pulling together of, of the facts and stats, as I'm, I'm sure you may uh, have experienced. Um, so certainly there are some organizations across the province that that do have the staffing and the resources to do this, but um, but we can recognize that there's a bit of a, um, a gap that we want to help bridge. Um, so the community profiles application that is on the BritishColumbia.ca site right now does provide some of this data, but it's for less than 50% of BC's incorporated communities, um, and there are no um, profiles for First Nations. Um, in terms of the opportunity side of things, um, at, there were about up to, I think, a thousand, and Amy, you could chime in, but about a thousand opportunities um, uh, at one time within Opportunities BC. So it's a lot of work uh, to get those opportunities in and, uh, and to manage those community profiles. Um, also, it's, it was clear to us that the applications themselves were leading investors or visitors to the websites down um, what we say you know is uh, is a cul-de-sac they, they have to go into the site find out information and then backtrack out of the site to find information about what opportunities might exist in that community or vice versa if they're interested in a community they have to exit the site and go back in somewhere else to learn so we really wanted to bring all of these together um, and over and above all of these challenges, um, in the world of uh, online search, um, Google has been changing their, um, their algorithms for Google Pages, where if your site is not mobile, mobily responsive, you get a lesser, um, a lesser ranking within Google. So um, that is also a challenge because not all communities have their economic development pages um, optimized for mobile. Um, and so that's, that's a big change that's out uh, there as well. So what we decided we needed to be able to do was provide um, BC communities with a greater profile online with the economic data that we know investors need. Um, we want to um, allow a, um, a forum where investors can self-match to communities and opportunities, and we want to provide communities with the instant access to the data that they need to respond. So what we've done is uh, we've integrated um, the information we currently have available on our website, which is um, a lot of uh, facts and stats uh, about BC's competitive advantage in the priority sectors. Um, and we've been able to integrate in the investment opportunities and community profiles. And so that is what we are here uh, to talk about today. Um, with the website we already have in place, BritishColumbia.ca, it is our primary vehicle for international online marketing. Um, it is uh, a part of all of the work we do with our uh, trade and investment reps around the offices uh, in countries and cities across the world. Um, and it is our 24-7 virtual trade rep. So um, we know that there are, uh, there are points of information that investors and international audiences might want to 
to understand about our sectors, and they'll be able to come straight to our site and, uh, and find that, and now they'll be able to understand more about the specific communities and those opportunities. In terms of, um, of reach for this website, um, we have about 700,000 page views in the last year, um, and 30% of that was from uh, international audiences, where China was, uh, was the largest uh, component of international views to our website. Um, the site itself is translated into uh, Korean, simplified Chinese, and Japanese, um, and also it is responsive to, uh, to the Google sites like I mentioned momentarily. All right, so for the data um, that is on this site that we'll go through in a moment, I just thought I would give you a, a quick snapshot of the type of data that the community profiles um, will have. Um, so we're thinking of it as microsites, so there's about over 390 individual microsite pages for communities across British Columbia, um, and those are municipalities, regional districts, uh, First Nations, as well as the economic regions in the province. Um, so building on that, we have up to about 1,300 data points per community that we've been able to roll up together in a centralized fashion um, for pushing half a million data points um, that are available to communities across BC and investors in, uh, in, a, in a format that is easy to use and, uh, and analyze. So the types of data that we, um, that we have within this site that you'll see in a moment, um, so demographics and labor force, um, major employers, we've got access to maps, um, we have listings of sites and buildings and opportunities, um, we have a lot of information about um, transportation, so that is proximity to uh, whether it's ports or airports, um, we have railway data, um, the major sectors, um, proximity to research and education facilities, uh, and quality of life information. Um, so part of this information um, is stored within a centralized government database. So this is so that we can do the work to collect the data and make sure the data is up to date. And then it automatically and dynamically will appear on the profile page for a given community. Now, some of the data points that, um, that are available through the site um, are provided directly by the community. So some of you may have been in touch, um, uh, received a call or outreach from, uh, from the BC Economic Development Association, um, and I believe we have Dale on the line today as well, listening in. Um, so the BC Economic Development Association um, had reached out to communities and uh, to gather some of the community managed data. So there are some data points that we'll look at in a moment um, that are best uh, provided by the community. So that's about who your contact is and kind of a marketing description and some of the quality of life measures as well. Um, also within this data is a connection to the First Nations uh, consultative areas uh, database, so that's about uh, traditional, um, uh, asserted traditional territories and that's embedded within the site as well. Um, one of the primary um, building blocks of this whole application is around the concept of open data and sharing data. So there are multiple different organizations, both within government and outside of government, that are collecting and using this type of information. And what we really wanted to do was centralize it so that more people and organizations can take advantage of, of the work. It's just a lot more efficient and it means that everybody is using the same data. Um, so the way that we're doing that is um, with the BC Economic Atlas is uh, another um, uh, application with, it's within JTST. You might have participated in a recent webinar. So uh, that application is using some of the same data as well as the First Nations Economic Development Database that is a project of the Aboriginal Business and Investment Council. Um, and so we're pulling in some information from there as well. In terms of opportunities, um, what we've uh, really tried to do is automate um, the, the generation of those opportunities within the site. Um, we understood that with Opportunities BC, um, it had a peak of around um, uh, 1,000, but there was a lot of work that would go into um, maintaining that, and so we thought that we could look to um, partners who were already in, um, in the environment that were doing similar type of work in terms of um, 
showcasing uh, different opportunities. So what we've done is we have partnered with uh, Venture Connect to be able to draw in businesses for sale that um, are for sale across the province and there are listings throughout the province uh, through them. Um, and we've pulled in um, sites and buildings for commercial and industrial real estate through a company uh, called Spacelist, which is uh, Vancouver-based, but they have uh, listings for across the province and across the country as well. Um, those two automated feeds will give us around 6,000 um, opportunities right off the bat when we launch. In uh, soft launch is in a couple of weeks. Um, and so that way, communities have uh, these opportunities um, right off the bat on the pages, and they're integrated into those community profiles, which again, I'll show you in a moment. Um, but we're also enabling communities to focus on the unique investment opportunities, and that's that first, uh, first um, box you see on the screen there. And that is where... Um, We've built a flexible uh, platform that communities can enter in opportunities that maybe are um, municipal in nature or perhaps it's um, a First Nations um, investment uh, and partnership opportunity or it could be um, uh, partnerships and investments for uh, private companies. Um, so it could be looking for R&D partners or, um, or equity investment. So we've created it in, in a way that um, we are able to provide a platform to showcase all of these different types of opportunities. Um, and make it as simple as possible to, uh, to bring in that information and provide investors what it is that uh, they need. Um, and I will also state that um, for the Venture Connect and the Space List opportunities, um, this is our starting point um, for pulling in um, data uh, from organizations that already uh, collect it. So um, as long as the technology is there on another, um, on another listing, we would be able to work to pull that in. And so at this time, these are the two um, that we were able to work with. So uh, this, is, this is just a point in time. It, we will continue to evolve. So I will um, jump into the demo in just a moment, but uh, Josh, I don't know if you had a question you were going to ask at this yeah, point. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Thanks, Sue, for uh, for the presentation thus far. Just a, a quick poll, just to help us give a, a better sense of um, of how many people are uh, watching the webinar with you. Today. Just helps us get a better sense of of numbers because you know that uh, some of you do partner up. Um, so on the, the screen in front of you, please click the, the radio button that, that best applies to you, and uh, we'll close the poll in probably about 20 seconds or so. Good, seeing lots come in here. We've got about 88% 80, of you voted, 90%. That's great. Thank you. Wonderful. Couple people asleep at the wheel. That's all right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with 93%, I think I will uh, close the poll there. Thanks very much. Well, that's great, Sue. I'll uh, I'll hand it back to you for uh, for the live demo. Thank you. All right, I am going to jump in here now. Tell me, is it the right screen up? Yeah, you're uh, you're good right to go screen, there. Josh? Yeah, you got the right screen. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Forgive me. All righty. So um, some of you may already be familiar with the uh, British Columbia.ca website that was uh, redeveloped um, within the last uh, two years and is our primary um, online um, uh, push for international marketing when it comes to exports as well as uh, investment attraction. So within the new site that is launching again in a couple of weeks, um, the new features that is, we know that investors often come through um, our site looking for information on a sector um, as opposed to coming in looking for information on the community or an opportunity. Um, so what we've done is integrated uh, the opportunities and the community information within our sector pages. So you can see here uh, one of the example pages um, that we have. Now I should also state that the information that you see on the Screen. This is dummy data because this is our prototype site. Um, again, we're soft launching in uh, a couple of weeks. So. so there are no cows involved in the ICT uh, and wireless sector that I know of, um, nor are there grapes. So uh, anyway, uh, so 
on a sector page, um, a lot of this information you'll see here is already um, already available on the site. But what's new about it is that we've been able to integrate some of the information that is community specific. So one of the categories we have on the community profile pages um, relates to leading employers. Um, we've heard uh, from investors that they want to understand um, who those leading employers are in the area um, so that they um, may even end up reaching out to those employers to find out um, you know how um, how their success has been and how they find uh, the labor market and different different questions like that so it provides good context to an investor um, so we draw that information in um, onto the sector page here so we always will show a connection back to the community that that uh, company is from Another dynamic part of the sector pages that we have is around the areas of concentration. And again, this is just a placeholder map. But what this map is designed to do is show where in the province there is a particular concentration um, in labor force for a given sector. Um, so we'll be able to show this information for um, at the regional district level and uh, the economic region level as well. So uh, perhaps you would see um, a strong representation in, uh, in the Fraser Valley, for example, if uh, this was the agri-foods page. So, and on the bottom of our um, sector pages, uh, we'll be able to incorporate opportunities. So we would show the three most recent opportunities um, that are in this given sector. Moving towards the bottom of the page, we have success stories, um, and we know that investors want to read those success stories to see who's gone before them in their given sector. So it's a bit of a companion piece to that leading employers along the same line that investors want to understand uh, what else has happened in that sector or in that region um, uh, in, in times recent times gone past. So for success stories, um, we uh, we will have them embedded here. That's already something we have on our website, um, but uh, there. Will be new functionality and it, um, within the new system, and it will also appear on uh, community profile pages. So I'll take a moment now and jump over to one of our community profile pages. Um, there we are. We've got Camloops as our example. Um, again, this is a prototype, so the data that you see on the screen may not actually be the uh, proper data. Um, so I'll take a step back just for a moment to talk about um, where this data has come from. You saw on this slide uh, earlier with the, with the triangle that some of the data we have collected from that centralized source um, so that it's, um, it's, we found that it's easier for um, us to collect that data in one go rather than uh, communities across BC look for that data. So part of the data comes from the centralized warehouse and then the other data comes from communities. And as I mentioned before, um, the BC Economic Development Association had, um, has been working uh, tirelessly over the past uh, few months um, reaching out to the economic development officers across BC as well as um, uh, chief administrative officers um, and others who fulfill similar roles for their community. So this is the sample of what, uh, what that community page looks like. And so right off the bat, you see that we have content that is up at the top here. And this is the place where um, your community can really talk about your strengths. It's kind of the marketing content um, that is uh, able to be edited at any time um, by communities. Um, and so this is really where you know you can talk about your strengths um, and uh, some of the unique features of your community. Um, we have a map, obviously. Now, um, when this is uh, live, it'll always show the proximity to Vancouver because we understand that investors may, um, may only know about Vancouver, so it provides them that reference point. Um, and we have uh, some of our key stats up here at the top. Um, these are also available in a format uh, where you can export the data down below here, which we'll get to in just a moment. But it provides that snapshot um, uh, of information for that investor. Um, we have the local contacts. So this is um, the local EDO or CAO, whomever it is that has been identified as the person, um, as that first point of contact. Um, we expect that the uh, that first point of contact within the community will really be the one that um, 
uh, an investor would reach out to. Um, the other contacts are provided more for a frame of reference, um, certainly with the provincial contacts. You know, we have heard um, from investors that when they're when the government is associated with something, it adds um, it there. It adds a level of, of credibility, so especially in Asian markets, so it's nice to, to add that in, but we do expect that the community um, would be the primary contact. Now, as we move through the page, um, you can see that we've got a communities nearby. Um, this is an auto-generated uh, feature that will show the closest 12 um, communities that are nearby uh, this given community. And that will include uh, First Nations as well. Um, and then this is a part of how you can, or a user, um, can discover other areas of the province um, that they may not have known about. Um, so they may not come into the site looking for information on merit, for example, but uh, when they're through, um, through the site and on a page like this, they would be able to discover other um, parts of, uh, of the province and other um, options that are out there for their investment. We have uh, the closest major centers, so we like to show that in proximity. Um, some of the other uh, major centers we have uh, within the, the database uh, is, um, I believe we've got Calgary and uh, Spokane, Seattle, um, Anchorage, um, so not just Vancouver as that reference point. Um, I mentioned a moment ago the asserted traditional territories in the area, so this uh, um, widget at the side will be able to display um, a list of the First Nations um, that have uh, an asserted traditional territory in the area and really embeds that, uh, that level of um, knowledge that we really want to impart um, uh, to the investors, give them access to all of the different information that they may require as they do their research. Um, and speaking of research, uh, we have the statistics navigator. So this is really um, where the data lives. Um, we have demographics. Um, so this is StatsCan data, of course. Um, so we have uh, worked with BC Stats to, uh, to consolidate this into our uh, major um, database. And we have a variety of different um, of, uh, categories of information within the demographics. Um, we have leading employers, um, which I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, this is information that can be um, provided by communities, as well as uh, we are exploring a third-party provider to be able to um, give us access to corporate data to, to help out in that front as well. Um, taxation, so some of the stats that we uh, have pulled together are the same for everybody in the province, so whether it's sales tax or um, income tax, um, we've worked to kind of gather that together and have it all in one place where uh, we would be responsible for updating it. Um, property tax, we've been able to work with the local government um, uh, division on uh, pulling together that information as well, so uh, that is something that is automatically updated um, and communities wouldn't need, to, uh, wouldn't need to think about maintaining that piece of the information. Um, labor force data is something that we have been uh, able to work with, um, with our partners um, within government um, to, to collect that information. Um, you may be familiar with the Work BC website and that also uses some of this information. So it's, that gets back to the data sharing um, principle that I was speaking about. So a variety of different labor related things. Uh, this is proximity, so this is about uh, the research and education centers um, that we have across the province and it will always show um, the uh, closest ones. And we have transportation, this is another proximity one that I had mentioned where we have automatically loaded in that information and there are some, the calculations happen within the system for, uh, for which ones are the closest. Uh, we have utilities information um, and then we have our quality of life information. Much of this quality of life information um, is provided by the communities. So. Um, Average daily temperature and climate information we've been able to collect um, from uh, from um, the federal government, um, and then but we have some of the other um, statistics like uh, the events that are happening in the area, the cultural places. Those are all things that communities um, can provide. And then we also have uh, government. So this is just a way to be able to um, include uh, who the who the representatives are at the various levels within um, within the site. Um, 
And speaking of various levels within the site, um, it's probably good to note as well that we have um, always have links back to the regional district that a community is in, as well as the uh, the economic region. Um, and this way, uh, users are able to kind of go up and see at a, at a higher uh, geography um, what types of communities are are in that area and what opportunities might exist. So we have industry sectors, and this. This is um, a companion, um, essentially, to the areas of concentration map that we looked at on the uh, sector page. Um, so this is driven from labor force data, and it shows the, uh, the, the top three um, sectors by, uh, by jobs numbers um, that, uh, that drive that, that economy. And so this, again, will link back through to the, uh, to the page, the sector page, because we really want to um, encourage discovery within the website. Um, now we have opportunities. So um, as I mentioned previously, um, our site will have um, opportunities displayed on all of the community pages um, uh, and they will uh, present the unique opportunities that I had mentioned as well as showing the sites and buildings or those businesses for sale. And then we have the success stories as I mentioned as well that they are embedded um, into, the, into the community pages. Now I'll go over to one of the opportunities. No, I won't. I will go to one of the First Nations pages since we're speaking about communities. Um, so we can click through to one of the uh, this is the Kamloops First Nation. Um, so this is a really similar setup um, to the uh, to the municipality page. Um, there's some data that's a little bit different, um, but uh, by and large, um, it's still serving the same function. Um, certainly, with the uh, overview and introduction area here, where uh, where a community can really talk about um, what makes their community unique uh, and uh, what opportunities might be um, might be available. And again, we have the proximity and through to the stats navigator as well, and opportunities and success stories. One of the unique pieces about the First Nations page is a connection to the First Nations Economic Development Database, and that is the treaties and agreements. Um, uh, this is something that automatically feeds in from that other website, um, and again can show investors um, success stories and things, uh, um, projects and agreements that have already been in place um, to give them a sense of uh, the current economic climate. Um, you know, one piece that I, that I don't believe I mentioned on the uh, the other community page is community links. Um, we really want the site to be able to marry together the data that we can collect and we can maintain with um, with fields and space for uh, communities to customize their own page. So certainly I spoke about the marketing content here, um, but also within community links, this is where a community can post links to their own um, ECDEV websites or if, they have, if they're a part of regional committees, this is where you can um, include those hyperlinks. Um, you can also upload your own resources and media. So if you have um, different uh, brochures or, uh, or any, um, you know, videos, information, photographs, you can attach those as well. And so that really um, provides another way for communities to tell their own story. Um, and also link through to social media. Um, and lastly, um, one of the customizations is also the uh, cover photograph. Um, we have some placeholder imagery that has um, been uh, sourced through uh, UBCM um, that is already in the site, um, but um, once we, we go live, uh, communities can edit and change around um, uh, the photos and any of their, their uh, custom data as well. So as I mentioned at the bottom of the pages, you can see that we have the opportunities uh, embedded right in there. Um, so I can have a look over here at one of the investment and partnership opportunities. So this is one of those unique opportunities where, um, where a proponent would enter in their information directly into the site. Um, so a proponent could be, um, could be a private company in BC or it could be the municipality if there's a co-development opportunity that, that, uh, that your uh, community is interested in finding partners for. Um, you can enter that one directly in here. 
So there's uh, always a connection back to the region or the community that the opportunity is in. Um, where applicable, it connects back to a sector um, that we have highlighted on our page. And so those are the BC Jobs Plan uh, priority sectors. So in this instance, it's uh, ICT and wireless. So we've designed this platform for opportunities um, to be really flexible so that we can accommodate a wide variety of opportunities that may exist across the province. Um, so this is really where um, a proponent can, can identify that it's equity that they're looking for or whether it's a partnership and we also have factored in um, a, a more general category um, other uh, that would allow for a variety of different opportunities. So similar to the, um, the community profiles, um, we allow proponents to add their own material on here. Um, this is, you know, almost a, a landing page, a profile for that opportunity, but we, we also encourage proponents to include their own links and include their own uh, um, PDFs and media um, here as well. So the community, uh, um, the listing contact rather, um, is up here in that uh, that upper right hand side. Um, so this is where we would um, in, where we would be expecting investors to kind of connect through, and they can click contact now, and it takes them to um, an email form, and it goes automatically to that um, to the listing proponent um, for them to get additional information. We do have a community contact on this page, so this would be um, whomever the designated um, contact is for the community that this opportunity has come up in. But it's expected that that is really there as the um, as the providing more information about the community um, uh, type of inquiry as opposed to an inquiry about that opportunity. So you can see that there's uh, customizable content within here. Um, there's mapping uh, functionality as well. Um, a similar investments and partnerships listing um, will, uh, will appear at the bottom of the pages. Uh, again, this is to encourage investors um, to understand what else is available. And then we have a, um, a really brief community profile um, that will allow uh, um, an investor to get a snapshot of, of what's happening within that community. Um, so as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, um, we have uh, automated feeds coming in for the other categories, so the, um, the sites and buildings and those uh, businesses for sale. Um, and so those ones don't need to be entered into the site directly. They would be entered into um, Space List and Venture Connect for free, um, and automatically those um, opportunities are, are pulled in on a daily basis into our site. Um, so for the proponent, um, it's uh, you know better bang for their buck, although they don't have to spend any money to do it, so no buck. Um, but you can. Uh, a proponent would enter in an opportunity on Venture Connect and then automatically will come over and populate on our site as well. And you're able to search on our site uh, by sector and by type as well. And that is, uh, that is the general overview of the, of the front end of our site. Um, I think that uh, what we're going to be doing, I will get into this in just a moment, about our next steps um, that talk about training, um, because we do have a whole administrative um, uh, functionality that is in the um, in the back end of the site and that's where community contacts will um, will be able to have access um, to do the work to you know to edit their profile pictures or who their contact is or um, also approve opportunities um, that uh, that come up within within the area um, so I'm going to jump back and open up my PowerPoint again. Um, Josh, this might be a good time um, for some questions. Sure, yeah, we've got uh, a couple of questions have come in here. Uh, perhaps some, uh, some that make sense just answer. given the, the past content. Um, question, a couple of questions from Terry. Um, have you considered including proximity to a regional hospital as a metric? Yes, under um, uh, under the um, stats navigator, there is a section about healthcare under quality of life um, that lists out. Um, I believe it is. Uh, need to double check if it's the number of beds or if it is the closest hospital, but there certainly is healthcare data that's in there. Awesome. Under that stats nav. 
And a couple other quick questions from Terry. I know these will be quick answers. Uh, question one, will the Opportunities BC website still exist? Great question. Um, so Amy, you might want to chime in on this one. The answer is yes, uh, sure. for, for the time being. I can do that. Sure. For the time being, the Opportunities BC website will still exist, but once the um, new BritishColumbia.ca website is launched and live, um, then Opportunities BC uh, will be decommissioned. Um, but the opportunities, uh, maybe this is your next question, Terry, but the opportunities that currently exist within Opportunities BC, um, uh, I believe there's um, communication that will go out today um, to talk to um, uh, proponents um, who've used Opportunities BC to start the, the um, um, communication about how they'll be migrated. So um, we're, when we go live to our soft launch, um, we will already have about 30 opportunities that will be incorporated into the new platform um, and, uh, and those that are more real estate or um, businesses for sale, um, I think we'll be given some instructions about how to make sure that uh, those opportunities are on our site when we go live um, to the public um, in September. You're a, you're a good mind reader, Sue. That was, in fact, Terry's next question. So, uh, <laughs> so there you go. We've, we've answered those off. And uh, with those questions out of the way, maybe we'll just uh, carry on, just thinking that we have uh, about 15 minutes left in our, in our scheduled webinar today. So we'll, uh, we'll move things right along. Great. Thanks for all the questions, Terry. Um, so in terms of timelines, um, I can, we, we've been working on this project for, um, I keep saying 18 months, but I've been saying that for about six months, so maybe a couple of years uh, since this project began. Um, and uh, we began with a lot of research, um, working with um, uh, communities, working with investors and site selectors, um, and to kind of uh, work with different audiences to really guide how we were going to develop this application. So at April, um, in April, um, we, uh, we had our demo site, which is what you've uh, just gone through today, um, and we, uh, we were able to uh, uh, go through that site with some, uh, maybe some of you, if you participated in the BC um, Economic Development Association Summit in April. Um, so we, uh, we were able to have our demo at that point while we were still continuing on with some of the community data collection and the development side. Um, we have had uh, community feedback um, uh, through um, dedicated usability testing um, and also that feedback um, uh, segment is still on ongoing and so this is our next phase um, as we move into the soft launch um, to keep getting that feedback and edits um, into the site. Um, you can see that we've got our soft launch um, happening, uh, it's probably going to be a I'll say August 5th, August 4th, around there, um, and that's where um, the site will be available for, uh, for the community editors to go in and see the site. Um, you can access it on the front end, um, and you can also access into the admin side of the, the screen as well and play around, look at the data, um, you can edit your photos and, um, and uh, any of that community managed data. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on through the month of, uh, of August. Um, and then moving out to the public launch, um, we are going to um, be able to uh, launch it publicly at, uh, at UBCM, um, so we're looking, forward, uh, we're looking forward to that a lot. Um, and that will not reflect the end of the project because uh, the way we've designed the site is that it is really um, flexible to be able to incorporate other data sets um, and other, um, other feeds. So uh, once we launch, uh, it's, uh, the development work won't stop. Um, we have uh, additional functionality um, that we're going to be incorporating and again looking at other data sets. Um, so, as I mentioned at the beginning of August is when we are uh, going to our soft launch. Um, so you will receive um, a notice uh, via email that uh, you are available to go into that uh, that site. Um, it's not password protected uh, on the front um, on the front end of it. So anybody, um, if they have the dedicated URL, uh, will be able to go in and have a look at uh, at this. Um, uh, beta site. Um, at the same time, our regular website, BritishColumbia.ca, will still be running, um, and that is the, the primary public site. So early August, we'll be sending out communication about um, how to access the site, and you'll be able to log in and update your content as well. 
Um, later on in August, we're looking at doing um, some training on how to update your profile and approve opportunities if you are the community manager, um, approving opportunities that um, come up in your area. Um, again, that opportunity approval um, is for those unique opportunities, not, um, there's no requirement to approve opportunities if they come in through Venture Connect or Space List because those are pre-vetted. Um, so it's really the, the, um, the unique opportunities. So, um, so we'll be able to provide training um, in August uh, and then we will also want to send out a survey to understand um, your experiences to date um, with receiving inquiries from international investors. Um, this is something that we will be um, tracking quite closely. Um, certainly we'll have available to us um, some reporting to be able to understand um, how the contacts are working and um, what those interactions look like. Um, but we want to understand a little bit of a baseline on, um, on your experiences so far um, with, the, with the programming that you already run independently. Um, so early September, as I mentioned, uh, that we we're going to have uh, the live site, so it'll just cross over and we'll have that available to our, uh, all of our audiences that use the website. And in late September, we're going to announce, uh, again, as I mentioned, at, uh, at UBCM and, and keep the work going. Um, in terms of updating the site, um, certainly, you know, we hope that uh, that our community managers will um, will be engaged and will want to look into their sites and, you know, maybe on an annual basis um, update some of that information. Though they are welcome to update it at any time, um, and we'll probably be um, working to send out reminders uh, on an annual basis and and uh, and remind folks um, that the site is available for them to to update. And that brings me to the end of the uh, of our uh, the scheduled um, PowerPoint. Um, so, Josh, I don't know if you have any other questions or if yeah. anything has come up that. Yeah, we sure do. Thanks, uh, thanks very much for that, Sue, and for the mm -hmm. for the live demo there. Um, so, yeah, we, we do have quite a few questions that have come in. Um, so, I'll just uh, I'll start going through the line here. Uh, Tom asks, who is ultimately responsible for entering your community's information? Um, so, ultimately, it is the um, the community's um, ECDEV um, representative. Um, when we go live at the beginning of August, it's already been pre-populated um, through the work we did with the BC um, EDA. Um, so it, it would be the community manager um, who would approve any um, future changes. Um, so I think once we go through the reminder phase, which will probably happen at the end of, I'm going to say probably March, we might send out another reminder. Um, but the, it's up to the community to decide if they want to change any of their marketing content or if some of the community managed data needs to change, you know, whether it's events or it's, um, you know, the um, community managed data. Number of warehouses, for example, that's another one that's community managed. Thanks. Um, question here from Robert. He's referencing the uh, 700,000 page views and he's wondering what's being done to drive traffic to the site. Great question. Um, so we have optimized our website. Um, so we have worked with um, to ensure that the search engines globally will be able to um, to recognize our site and have it come up higher in ranking. So um, what we've been working on is um, we have uh, a Google campaign, of course, um, but also for the, um, the search engines that are in uh, Japan, Korea, and China, um, where we have uh, made modifications and continue to make modifications for it to rank highly um, internationally. <laughs> Um, all of the community profiles and the opportunity profiles on the site have been designed in such a way with a template that um, we have keywords embedded um, right within the coding. Um, and then in the, uh, in the training, we do have um, suggestions for uh, both proponents and community managers with how they, can, um, how they can write the content to describe the opportunity or community in such a way that it's keyword rich and that, uh, that the international search engines will uh, access it. Um, so that's the, the online side of things, um, but um, 
our uh, trade and investment rep network around the world um, use this site as the as the anchor for uh, for information on the province. So that is something that is embedded in all of the activities that they do. Um, and we're working with our TIRs to provide training straight to them, um, TIRs trade and investment rep, um, to uh, work with them on how that they how they will be able to promote uh, these new features um, uh, to their networks. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, next question from Nelson. Who, it looks like he may have left. He's, he's not online, but uh, we'll answer it still for the benefit of the recording. He's asking, are unincorporated communities able to have a community profile on the website? Great question. Um, so the way we've um, the way we're able to um, address unincorporated communities is through that regional district page um, that can be customized to call out specific um, communities uh, within it. Um, all of the data um, for it to be um, automatically updated is um, is based on um, on the regional districts and the municipalities. So. Um, we wanted to be able to provide a flexible environment where we could talk about where a community could talk about um, about their competitive advantage, um, and it's an improvement because on the first uh, on the existing community profiles. Um, application we don't have any um, it's not automated to be regional districts so so that's how we're going to handle it um, with this new application Great. and it uh, looks like the last question here to come in um, is from Blair and Blair asks if uh, a PDF of your presentation can be made available not sure if uh, if that's possible certainly the recording is but just wondering if uh, if you're able to put up a PDF of the PowerPoint as well yeah, it should it shouldn't be a problem. We've, I do have a um, a batch of communications um, that we're going to send out um, when we when we uh, provide that uh, new URL for August fourth. So there'll be a number of different things that are um, in that uh, email, um, and that email will be going out to all of those who are identified as the community contact, um, and as um, we'll also make sure that if there is. Um, if there are gaps, we've got the list um, from today's webinar, so that Great. group will get it as well. And uh, just to follow up a, a bit more on that, Blair, uh, you will be receiving a uh, an email in about uh, a week from today that will have a link to the recording, and, uh, and I'll make sure that I bundle that uh, PDF beside the recording link as well, so it'll be there for ah, your convenience. Not seeing any more uh, questions come in right away. I'll maybe give it uh, another 15 or, or 30 seconds to uh, to let any last minute questions come in. But I think we had well, some uh, some great discussion there. We did, and I will say that if there are any other questions that come up after the fact, um, or if you talk with some of your colleagues, um, feel free to uh, to just send me an email directly. Um, it's sue.wheatley at gov.bc.ca, um, and uh, and I'm happy uh, to chat with you about. Uh, about the project. Great. Oh, one uh, one last comment here from Robert. Uh, he says, fully supportive of third-party provider on employee numbers. Tough data to get in larger communities. Absolutely. That's uh, We, we want to make this as easy as possible for everybody and use the power of tech to, uh, to help us get there. Uh, also got a comment in here from uh, Dale, Dale Wielden from the BCEDA, and he's saying uh, we're also Hi, happy to answer any questions as well. Absolutely. Dale has been, um, and, and the folks at BCEDA have been a tremendous help um, as we've uh, developed and pulled together this information. Um, and uh, we've been working with um, a group called the Castlemaine Group um, to help us with the First Nations data that have been um, very helpful as well. So um, thanks to both of them. Great. Well, uh, not seeing any other questions come in, uh, I'd just like to say uh, a big thanks to Sue and Amy for taking the time to uh, to present today and, and join us on the webinar series, and also a big thanks to all of our attendees for your enthusiasm for this new project uh, moving forward. We hope you join us in future webinars, uh, but until then, take care. Thanks, everybody.